Okay, now we're recording. Um, so usually when I give a Friday afternoon uh, Zazen refresher, I ask for questions. But uh, this time I was requested <laughs> to um, do a, uh, a full uh, Zazen um, instruction with all the details. So um, that's what I will do. And uh, what I have just done is uh, show us our, how we enter, uh, uh, approach our uh, seat by bowing. And you don't have to fall over when you sit down, like I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of the, of the, of the uh, instruction. So first of all, um, I, I'm going to uh, start out with uh, showing you the various uh, um, uh, ways of crossing our legs. Um, I know that many, many of you uh, have been through this before many times, um, but we tend to forget uh, little things and uh, major things. So that's why I'm going to talk about everything as if you didn't know anything. <clears throat> so. Um, the way I'm sitting now is what I call uh, the campfire uh, approach, the, or the, the, the cowboy approach. You're sitting around the campfire and you're crossing your ankles, and your knees are up. This is a uh, very common entryway to sit to uh, cross your legs. And then uh, some people can right away cross, uh, do the, uh, what we call the um, a quarter lotus. That's where you put your uh, left uh, foot on your calf. Um, but there's an intermediate step, which is called um, uh, um, Burmese. Burmese. the Burmese position, where you don't actually cross your legs, but you keep one leg tied up against your body and uh, your, other, your left leg in front of your um, right leg. Uh, and that's a very co a comfortable position for most people, and it's a good entry way to uh, uh, begin sitting. And then um, the third way is to put your left foot on top of your um, thigh. And it's good to, if you can put it all the way up as far as you can, because it takes the pressure off your knee. It, it takes the pressure off your knee when you, when you put it, your foot all the way up. And uh, if you only do it halfway, then it uh, puts pressure on your knee. And then there's, um, that's the half lotus. And uh, <clears throat> the full lotus is where um, you put your right foot on your left side as far up as you can, and then put your left foot on your right thigh as, a, as well as you can. I do not recommend this. Sometimes people start to do this before they're ready. Uh, it's, when you begin, it, it can be a little painful. <laughs> but, but once you get used to it, it's very comfortable. So, um, uh, I, I recommend it for, you know, w what I recommend is that you start out with the easiest posture, the, 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 the way that you can sit for the longest period of time without um, having too much trouble. So, so little by little, you know, it, when you're, um, uh, your leg will tell you how much, how far to go. When your legs tell you, gee, I want to come up a little further, then that's the time to do that. So wait for the signal from your legs. So you're cooperating with your body, and your body tells you what it wants you to do. So listen to your body. And don't try to do something too quickly, or think that you have to sit in this full lotus. Uh, any position that you sit in that's comfortable is good. The main thing is that um, 
you, you, t you take a position that is the easiest for you to, to sit. Uh, the easiest position for you when you're sitting. And then if you need to sit in a more extreme position, that's fine. Um, so uh, once we have our, our uh, legs in the, in the position that's appropriate for us, um, we, um, <clears throat> hold our back as straight as we can. The way I uh, teach holding our back straight is to put your hands on, on your knees like this and to lean over, arching your back so that your head is not down, your head is up, all the way up. That's, and that helps to give you a curve, to um, give you your natural curvature of the back. The, yes, like this. And then just sit up. And, and keep your head rotated down so that the back of your head and the shoulders and, and your uh, behind are all in a straight line. And you're not looking up like this. A lot of people do that. Keep your head not like this, but like this. And you can take a few deep breaths, like that. I'm exaggerating, but... And this sets... Um, uh, it's, it... Um, uh, uh, primes your breath. It primes your breath so that uh, it allows your breath to, to go down to, to your lower abdomen. So when you inhale, your lower abdomen expands. And when you exhale, it contracts. Sometimes I will teach to, um, in order to prime your breathing, to take a really deep breath through your mouth for three times. And then let exhale and feel your front your abdomen and your backbone coming together. And then just uh, apply your normal breathing through your nose, but deeply. I say lower abdomen, uh, <clears throat> lower abdomen is really, the, of course, the bottom of your lungs, but it feels like your lower abdomen. So you um, exhale all the way to the, to the bottom of where it's, your breath can't go any further. And then you inhale. And so um, to just resume normal breathing, we don't try to control our breath but we simply follow it. If, you, if it, uh, the rhythm of your um, breathing, of your breath is quick, then just let it be quick. If it's uh, slow, let it, just let it be slow and just follow the rhythm and it will settle it, your breath will settle itself into the proper mode by itself. So we do not exercise breath control. We simply follow our breath as it is. You can count, if you like, from one to ten in order to establish your attention on your breathing. From, you in, inhale, and when you exhale, you count one. We only count on the exhale. And then inhale, and count two. And it's not like counting sheep. It's, uh, you, you become the breath. Your whole body, mind, 
is the breath. So, one, inhale, and then exhale. Stop, and then inhale. And then exhale, two, three, like that. If you get to 10, you're lucky. Your mind is always um, uh, wandering in some direction. So you realize how much your, your mind is wandering when you count. And it, when you get to three or four um, uh, and you forget what you're doing, you just come back uh, reminding yourself. This is called uh, the practice of recollection. Always reminding yourself, oh yes, come back. Oh, yeah, come back. And you don't have to say goodbye to what you're thinking. You just let go of it and come back to posture and breathing. Um, when you uh, have established a posture, you, put your, you can put your hands upside down on top of your knees and then lean over to the right as far as you can go. Slowly. And then lean over to the left as far as you can go. This stretches out your body and allows you more freedom and flexibility. Um, one of the main factors of Zazen is flexibility. Although we're sitting in an um, uh, extreme position with our legs all tied up and our body in a, in a uh, seemingly rigid position, which it's not, we actually should, when we sit, um, find the various places where we're holding tenseness and, and uh, enter that place um, and dispersing the tenseness. It's not, I, I'm not using the word tension. Tension holds everything together. Tenseness is what's extra. So we find the correct tension that holds our body together with ease and let go of the tenseness, which is um, uh, caused by various um, uh, mental problems <laughs> like oh my god how did i do this <laughs> so once we have a, you, you can do this as many times as you want and depending on how good it feels it really feels good to do this this is a way also of letting go of tenseness because we think of uh, zazen is some kind of, often we do, not everybody, not always, but we think often of uh, that we're sitting in a, in a very tense way. Sometimes when I go walk around and adjust people's posture, they're just as stiff as a board or like a statue. Flexibility is the name of the game in, in zazen. To be totally flexible, that's what you should aim at. At the same time, um, holding uh, uh, the posture in, in a um, straightforward way. So then, um, once we have established uh, our, um, our posture and our breathing, uh, we put our hands in the mudra. This is called cosmic mudra. We're holding the whole universe in, in the palm of our hand. Sometimes uh, it said, hold the mudra in your left palm. Hold the, hold the universe in your left palm. So uh, I don't want to go into that, but it's great. We're universal beings. We're... Um, bits and pieces of the universe. So we should appreciate that.
And when you hold your hands like this, uh, in this mudra, cosmic mudra, the thumbs are barely touching each other. This is a kind of barometer of uh, how you're doing. If you're, you know, if you're uh, holding your thumbs like this uh, and pressing them together, that you know that there's a lot of tenseness in your body. And if you let them uh, uh, drop, you know that there's a lot of laxness in your body. So the, the balance between effort and ease is what we're always aiming at in Zazen. Effort keeps the posture upright and um, uh, it exerts, it, 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 uh, keeping the posture upright without being tense, but finding the right tension so that uh, you remain comfortable and flexible. At the same time, it's like the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, it's all held together. Uh, all the, all the uh, I don't know how many, 350 bones and tens, tension, ten, uh, tendons and all that. So all those parts of the body are following the leader. And the leader is sitting up straight and letting go at the same time. So letting go is the ease that allows the posture to be, to be uh, to sustained for long periods of time. It's called comfortable. This is what makes uh, posture comfortable. To sit with um, uh, good effort and good ease at the same time. So these are two sides. Uh, and this is what makes um, our posture, our, our, our zazen, uh, universal. Because um, the effort is one side, and uh, the ease is the other side. The ease is, uh, the effort is hum hum human, and the ease is uh, Buddha. Mm. So our human nature and our Buddha nature working together in total harmony. So you can feel the e the um, uh, the thumbs barely touching. If you can concentrate on that, that's really good. You don't have to count. Counting is for, uh, you might say beginners, but not necessarily. Um, when I find myself in a difficult position, uh, in, in order to return to uh, uh, the ease, um, I just automatically find my counting because I've done that. I've learned how to do that. So sometimes people say, well, do I have to keep counting? You know, I, what, what do numbers have to do with meditation? <laughs> um, but yes, uh, you don't have to keep counting. But if you learn how to count, it's a, it's a valuable tool. Suzuki Yoshi used to say, like, uh, it's like um, a, a handle on a cup. You don't need the handle in order to drink out of the cup, but it, uh, it can be a, uh, a help. <clears throat> so we're sitting with the right, correct um, uh, posture. Our, our, our feet are in, the, in, a, in a place where we can actually uh, feel comfortable for ourselves. And um, uh, our breath is, um, we're, we're settled in our breath. Um, and then there's uh, uh, the thinking mind. Mind is, shita is mind. 
It's a kind of generic term for mind. Well, sometimes it has a specific uh, meaning. But when we talk about mind, mind means con- means um, uh, <clears throat> um, I think uh, um, concentration. Uh, but um, uh, there are many levels of concentration in our mind. Uh, our mind um, starts to wander because um, mind, our mind is always working constantly. You know, and if you read the books, uh, the books are, are rather simple sometimes, the explanations <coughs> uh, in the translations, but um, mind, uh, we, um, uh, is always looking for something. Our mind is always looking for food of one kind or another. It's always seeking something. And uh, it's very hard to control our mind. So sometimes the books will say, you should stop your thinking, cut off thinking. Uh, but actually, you can't really cut off thinking. Not for very long. You, you know, you can do it for a little bit. But it always sneaks up on you in the back. So we think we're stopping our mind here, but it's coming up here. And before we know it, we're thinking, this is uh, the nature of our thought. We're always thinking. Uh, we're not thinking. Mind is thinking. Thinking is thinking. It does it all by itself. We don't necessarily uh, <clears throat> call it forth. But the thinking mind is, uh, always needs sustenance. So we let it have sustenance. We don't try to stop our, the thinking, uh, the working of our mind. Uh, we allow the working of our mind to um, enter. We notice, we, we are aware of, of the thought. And then we let go of the thought. The problem is when we don't let go of the thought. So this is a very important part of zazen, to, um, you know, to um, not try to stop the, think, the thoughts, but to simply let them uh, have their, their, their thinking and pass on. And our, our, our uh, um, uh, job, so to speak, is um, to not be led astray by them. And so we te- when, when we realize that our mind is thinking something, we come back to, and think the thought of Zazen. It, we do have positive thinking, and that the positive thinking is to think the thought of Zazen. And when other thoughts are uh, when our mind carries us off to other thoughts, to come back to, to the thought of zazen. So we're continually returning to what we're doing. And that's our training, is, to com- is always to keep coming back to the thought of zazen. So think the thought of zazen. That's my motto. Think the thought of zazen. It's not like don't think. That we have to direct a thought somewhere, think a thought of zazen, and then zazen thinks its own thoughts. So there's where sometimes we just let our th- our thoughts let let them think, and we could sometimes follow them. They're very interesting, right? So the discipline, although they're very interesting, the discipline is not to be captivated by or seduced by our thinking mind. The whole world around us is making, you can say, is making an effort to seduce us. (laughs) 
So uh, we are, our, our uh, effort is to not get caught. That's what our old teacher said. Just don't get caught by anything. But we like to get caught. This is one of our problems. We like to get caught. It's called desire. There's nothing wrong with desire. Desire is important and necessary. But um, uh, this um, seduction of the world around us, especially in the, in the, in the age of advertisement, <laughs> <laughs> Everything is advertising itself. Me, me, me. And, and our mind gets caught by that. Um, if you like it, great. Do that. Let yourself get seduced. That's fine. It's not really fine, but I can't help that. <laughs> so our discipline is to keep returning to the thought of Zazen. When we're... When we're um, Thinking the thought of zazen, we're doing zazen. When we think the thought of something else, we're doing that. So um, it's it's easy. The hardest thing is to stay focused on zazen, because as we sometimes say, it's not interesting. But when you get bored, I think boredom means disconnection. I might get bored, think that, oh, doing, washing the dishes is boring. But once I engage in it, it's not boring. It's interesting. It's like, it, it captures my interest. So, um, when you feel bored, just come back to it because you're not thinking the thought of zazen. There's a gap. So don't leave any gap in your in your um, uh, in, in your zazen in your mind. That's why coming back or letting go of uh, your seductive mind to your. Um, uh, Practice mind is so important. <clears throat> so, um, uh, sitting up straight, <clears throat> um, in order to um, have a successful, I say successful, but in order to have a six, the most uh, satisfying zazen experience is to hold your back straight for 40 minutes. That is the key. You slump and you're tired and you think, and you, you lose your posture and uh, you lose the strength of your, of your body. So to keep your back straight, that's where you come back to it. And then all the rest of it is easy, more easy, easily accessible. To keep the, the, uh, the to keep your back straight and keep your head on top of your spine. And when I when we say look down a little bit, look at the floor or something, it doesn't mean that you lean your head forward. It's simply you rotate your head, but you keep it in place. Uh, and then you go, you can go over your whole body little by little, and scanning as my is my mudra correct? Because everything is changing. You may feel ah, this is perfect perfect posture, but then it's always changing. And so uh, when we do a scan and scan are all these parts in where I want them to be. Um, and the more you can do that, the easier it is to hold your posture. You think, oh my God, really? To hold my posture up for 40 minutes like this? Yeah, you can do that. Most of us can. If you can't do this, 
you do this is like for my my this instruction is for someone who is uh, physically fit <laughs> to be able to do that but not everybody is so you have to find your own way given uh, the instruction you may not be able to sit like that and so you find the way that you can do that so um, it's like compensation. Compensation is really important. Uh, you know, if your knees are uh, uh, sore and all this and that, um, you can sit in a chair. It's fine to sit in a chair. If you can sit in a chair without leaning on the back, that's the best. If you can't, then lean on the back. There's no, there are instructions about sitting in a chair, but um, uh, you, you have to accommodate yourself according to your um, ability to do that. We, you know, if you're sitting in a wheelchair, um, you have to find how you can do that given the circumstances. So the effort you know, the success is not so much in uh, how well you look when you're sitting, but in um, your effort to find, it, to find the right posture, given the circumstances. Some people have to lay down. That's good, as long as their effort is, uh, uh, they have sincere effort in finding the right way to do that. So, you know, realization, a good, a good percentage of realization is in, is in your effort, not so much in what it looks like. Uh, I can sit, you know, and model the, uh, um, uh, uh, the perfect position for, for Zazen, but that doesn't mean that my Zazen is good. It simply means that I've you know, allowed, I, my effort has given me the ability to do this. But um, sometimes the person who is, um, has the most difficult time sitting, but perseveres, is the model for all of us. So we may look around the zendo and see people who are sitting really well, and, and the, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the best zazen or that they're the most successful zazen. It's pretty good, but <laughs> the effort of the, of the uh, one who has the hardest time has the most benefit. So I encourage um, everybody to not worry about what your zazen looks like but how, how you really make your effort to do what you can. The enlightened medicine is in the effort. <clears throat> so I, what I suggest to everybody is when you sit down from beginning to end, that you give yourself zazen instruction. You know what you need to do to sit well. And so you give yourself instruction every time. Like, this is how I bow. And this is how I get up on the tongue. This is how I cross my legs. This is how... <clears throat> and so you, you're focusing in on what you're doing. And if you can do that, and do it every single time you sit, then you can give us an instruction to somebody else because it comes from you and not just from your head. It comes from your whole body mind, which is in harmony. So body, breath, and mind. Um, 
those are the three elements that we're always working with, basic elements of Zazen, body, breath, and mind, and bringing them into one uh, harmonious uh, peace. Question. Would you like to take a few questions? Yes. Actually, um, if people can, do you want to explain the process, Karen? Yes. Do this for about 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, 10 minutes. So. We have a short period for questions. Please put your questions in the chat box. Due to our setup today, we cannot all hear each other. So, You'll see at the bottom of your screen, there's an option for chat. And if you click on that, put your question in, and Hozan will present the question to Sojin to answer. Do we use Sojin Roshi or do we use Berkeley Zen Center? Uh, either way. Okay. Either one. Okay. I hope that the chat is set up so that people can actually chat, though. Oh, we could just hear Baika. There are a few questions, Hosan, now. Okay. So oh. go ahead. You read them then. Okay. Um. The first question is, can you explain the tripod of sitting, yes. the height of the cushion, for example? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, when we sit in, in the uh, traditional way on the cushion, we should sit um, about a little, uh, some, somewhere around halfway on the cushion, maybe a little further back, but not too much, maybe two thirds of the cushion. And uh, we should have the cushion high enough so that we can, it helps us to hold our back straight. Um, some people sit high and some people sit lower, but you, you can find that out uh, by doing. Um, and the two knees being down, this is, it's, that's why eventually, if you're not, you know, if you're sitting cowboy style, to actually get your two knees to, to go down and uh, the, bot, the, the tailbone of your spine, uh, the three, those three points make a triangle. Um, but you should, it's, it's, it's really helpful to be able to um, uh, not sit on your tailbone but to sit on the back of your, of your thighs, uh, your two knees and the back of your thighs, uh, which take uh, the weight. Tailbone is not so good for taking the weight. So there's a little subtle difference there. Um, it, so if you sit a little higher, then it helps your, um, uh, it, it, it helps your, the, the, back of your thighs to give support to your body. Does that make sense? So the triangle is, is the most stable position when you're sitting. And that's why we use it. Um, you know, when people are sitting and their elbows, your elbows are a little bit out from your body. Sometimes it's explained as two raw eggs under your one, one, one under your left, one under your right armpit. So, so it keeps you from <laughs> holding your, your armpits too close to your body. So if somebody comes along and pushes your elbow, just your elbow moves. If you're sitting too tightly, too, too much, too rigidly, then your whole body goes over. <laughs> so um, uh, 
the, um, this triangle I see as like the roots of the tree. You, we are all trees in this sense. And this triangle, your knees and your, um, uh, I will call it your, your behind, um, give you a, a stability like roots in the ground. And then the rest of the body is very flexible. Like, you know, like, can you see this? There's no, there's no, nothing to stop you. It's just all flexibility. It's all flexibility. It's not rigid. It's not, you're not a statue. So that's what we should be working toward, is finding the ease within uh, the effort. It's a secret of work. It's a secret of uh, how we negotiate our way and stay um, comfortable in our body. Karen, I have, a question. I have a question that came in from a young gentleman in Japan. Okay. Who asks, is there a difference between how we respond to thoughts and how we respond to visual or auditory phenomena during Zazen? Yeah. Well, um, we simply let everything come and we simply let everything go. We don't, we respond, but we don't react. Responding means that we recognize what's in front of us. And we, rec we recognize our feelings, we recognize our um, uh, thoughts, we recognize, you know, we don't ignore them, but we don't react to them. Responding, there's a difference between response and reaction. Response means that we recognize. Reaction means that we, um, uh, um, that we are affected by it. So we're not particularly affected by what, uh, by our, our, our emotions and thoughts and feelings. But we, um, we acknowledge them but we don't get mixed up with them. Maybe two There's, more, Karen? Yes, there are a couple more. There's another question about whether the arm or the hand rests on the thigh. Okay. When we place our hands in the mudra, yes. does the arm touch the thigh? Well, it, it, you know, that's a tricky little problem <laughs> because like my, my my heels are pretty close to each other, and it's kind of easy. I don't lean on my hand, but my hand can be touching my, uh, uh, touching um, my, my thumb, my uh, heels. But if I'm only sitting with one leg up, then it's a different situation. It's a little more awkward because, but, you get used to these things, you know, and you find you find where the balance is. Um, you know, this upper body is like a circle. People sometimes say, "Well, I, I find it hard because um, to hold because my arms get tired." But actually, if if you see it as a circle, there's there um, a circle has no. Um, it's it, the, the pressure is the same all, all the way around, right? The pressure of a circle doesn't vary. So it, when you hold, when you think of that, of this upper body, the, the arms and the shoulders and the hands as a circle, then you equalize the, the pressure. And so it's, it, it becomes, it's not a problem. Because only when there's an inequality of pressure is there a problem. So, Jen, um, what about if you get pins and needles in your foot or ankle or calf that you're that it falls asleep? Oh yeah, yeah. Or you become numb. Is there something? How do you relate to that? Well. This is one of the pro this is one of the um, uh, characteristics of zazen, is uh, and es especially when you begin, uh, because you're you're 
um, the, the blood vessels in your, um, uh, in your legs, well, you use legs, um, uh, is not used to this. And so the, the blood is cut off, and, you feel, and you're, it's not entirely cut off, but it's, it's slowed down. And it, it causes um, uh, numbness or tingling uh, in, in, your, in your legs. So um, it, it's, it's, it's an unsolvable problem. <laughs> it's, it's one of the, it's, but it's one of the characteristics of holding your, keeping your legs like this, right? So, but the more you sit, the, the easier that becomes. Sometimes uh, the, uh, that nerve, the... Um, the vagus nerve. Vagus? No. The nerve... Sciatic? Sciatic, sciatic, sciatic yeah, nerve yeah, yeah. Um, gets pinched. And then that can cause, you know, a lot of, uh, some kind of problem. Um, but my uh, understanding, or my experience, let's say, of this problem is, for me, I don't recommend this to everybody, but for me, I just sit through everything. <laughs> I've done that for over 50 years. And uh, I don't have that anymore. Uh, so we have to be... We have to be uh, open to allowing that to happen and not get worried about it. Although, it can be a problem. It's an occupational hazard. <laughs> but I don't worry about that anymore. I mean, I remember having it for years, you know, but I just keep sitting. And then it goes away. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> and then it happens again. <laughs> and then it doesn't happen anymore. And then it happens again. <laughs> it's, it, it's, you know, it's not permanent, even though we think it's permanent. It's not. It comes and goes. So, that's why, I, here's what you can do. This. When you find that that's happening, just do this. And that will help the blood to flow through your legs. So I do recommend that. We say, when you sit, sit still. But this is included in sitting still. <laughs> to, to sway back and forth. And then you can feel your, that um, tingling or... Uh, and it's, this is especially good when you um, at the end of Zazen. I always recommend this at the end of Zazen because this will start the, uh, start the blood flow again. So um, it feels really good to do this. <laughs> Maybe that's a good place to end. Uh, yeah. Could we close with the, uh, the four vowels? Yeah. <laughs>